In Lemien, there is a line said in French. This line is... It translates to, I don't even know where to start, which is true. Hassel had been looking for truth and insight by picking up the diamonds, but she really doesn't know how to heal. She doesn't know where to begin on the road to self-love. Then the best part of Let Me In, she shoots the bird with the diamond. But then, when she goes to see it, it is an actual bird. By having shot it with a diamond that represents truth, she unveiled what it really was. It was truly a dove, one that represents peace, love, and freedom, and Hassel shot it down in haste. It is important to note that the last part of the song is sung by the dove Hassel. She sings, The moon rises, and I am becoming you. We were so different, but when I see you, my heart gets teary. The girl is a boy's girl. This is basically Hassel taking on the false persona and false promises of the dove that she concocted in her head. Then the dove Hassel says, the girl is a boy's wish, and we see Hassel holding the dead dove. This tells us that Hassel had wished to be free and had wished to live like a bird, but she couldn't. She had been hindering herself as she had no self-confidence or positive image. The dove, as stated, represented everything Hassel wished to be, but Hassel ultimately could not become it, truly. That is why her song does not play in Rain 51 DB when we see the Dove Hassel, because that is not Hassel. She cannot, nor ever will be, free, because she shot down the possibility of it herself. Now, let's discuss Go On. As stated prior, she is a Christ-like figure, and Jesus has healing powers. We see it all over the Bible, and I even discussed it with you today in the story of the resurrection of Lazarus. Why would Go On be healing Hassel? I had said earlier that maybe Goan is going back to right a wrong. We can interpret Goan running in the dark after the dream catcher and falling is the past. That dream catcher was in the yellow truck that Hassel was in when she arrived in the universe. Goan is even running after it on the road that Hassel had driven off on. And Goan is too slow, and she falls, failing and reaching Hassel that time. Whatever her intentions were at the time, we can't be too sure. I'm assuming that they were similar ones to her intentions of now. Flash forward to daytime, where Goan of the past lays down on the ground, unconscious. Another Goan appears, and looks back at the first Goan, almost with a knowing look. It kind of looks like when a stronger character looks onto a weaker, more naive one, as if they pity them for their hopeful and childish wishes to make a better future. Goan walks away, shedding her coat. This is, again, shedding the layer of the past Goan. After the events of One and Only, we know that Goan is sure of herself and her capabilities. Goan will not be held back anymore by who she once was and her childish demeanor. It's like she's coming of age before our very own eyes. Then she approaches the plane and touches it, again with a knowing look. She knows what this plane is, which girl is connected to it, and how she can heal the hurt from this place. We know that the events of Let Me In and Hostel's eternal conflicts are being reversed, as we hear a whining noise when Goan shuts her hands over the dove feathers. Goan is reversing the pain and struggles that we witnessed in Let Me In, and when we see her open her palms to release the butterflies, we know this to be true. Both butterflies and birds are analogous, meaning that they have a similar function and resemblance, but they are different in origin. Both butterflies and birds can fly, and they also must mature and learn to do so on their own. Both Goan and Hassel have the desire to be free, to fly and to be sure in themselves and who they are, but they must do so on their own. The difference is that Goan was strong enough to do that, whereas Hassel was not. To me, since one third and YY by Y parallel each other, I believe Goan is treating Hassel just as she wishes she had treated Olivia. As established in many of my videos, Goan is the only other girl in YY by Y to be connected to Olivia, as seen from their logo, and she is the partner in their YY by Y chromosomal pairing. Perhaps, since Goan is the girl that represents hope, she wants to inspire hope in Hassel. Remember, in High High, the girl that finally inspires Olivia to love their YY by Y being as a whole and join Luna was Eve, the girl representing Faith. So perhaps this time around, Goan wants to be the one to give true and strong hope to an angry, suffering girl. I also can't help but believe that she wants to help her because of their parallels. If you want to know more about their connections and parallels, check out my two X1X analysis videos because I discuss them there. 
Another interesting thought that I had in regards to one third and YY by Y paralleling each other is the thought that Olivia and Hassel mirror the same antagonistic roles in their subunits. We've made pretty strong arguments for Olivia and Vivi sharing that cast out antagonistic dynamic, but with this new information, could it be possible that it could be Hassel as well? Or that it could just be Hassel and not Vivi? We'll just have to see as new developments are released. As the butterflies fly away, higher and higher, above the night sky, as Hassel sings and let me in, Goan looks up at them again with a peaceful look. She was finally able to go back and heal Hassel, to heal her mirror, to mend their connection. The gentle piano that plays as the butterflies are released indicates peace and tranquility to us, something that Hassel has desired for a long time. Hassel can now truly fly like a bird. The caged bird no longer needs to sing its sad song. Moreover, she can fly like a butterfly, which is a saying at the end translated from Icelandic. Interestingly enough, that same statement can be read as fly like a bird, depending on the accent mark over the last words O, oh, which also connects the two on an even deeper level. This scene also utilized a similar motif from Let Me In, the last scene where she holds the dead bird. These scenes parallel each other. Hassel had killed off her own possibilities of freedom, whereas Gowan embraced it, and allowed herself to burgeon amidst the dark and cold. In my Let Me In analysis, I did talk about how the winter is the last season in the seasonal timeline of life. It represents death, as leaves fall from trees, animals hibernate, and it is very cold and harsh. Of course, in a climate like that, we were going to see the death of a character's hope and dreams of happiness and contentment, for the weather indicated so. And this time, when Goan visits, there is no snow, no ice, no cold, frigid waters. The sun is out, albeit a bit cloudy, as the weather in Iceland is a bit harsh year-round, and Goan has come in the daytime to heal in men. Now, after this deduction from the teaser, I can only imagine what could come next. How does Kimlip connect to all of this? We saw her shoot herself in the back in Girlfront, just like Hassel shot the dove and let me in. So could this mean that there was a conflict between herself too? Not to mention, all of those paper airplanes and let me in, as well as in Girlfront. We initially believed it to be spreading of the location of the girls, but could it have a deeper meaning? And what about Yojin? She is still so mysterious. We saw flashes of orange and let me in. We saw it in X1X. So it begs the question, will we see it in the next teaser? X21X? Will we have some development on her influences in the lore as well? I'm starting to believe that not only will Goan, Hassel, and Kimlip have a huge part in this next comeback, but Yojin as well, and possibly even Cherry, as she too had her color present in the X1X teaser. Not to mention, the XX circle splits into five different parts at the end of both X1X and X11X. Who are the other girls in this next circle? And I'm not just saying this because Hyunjin is my bias, but I feel like she will somehow be tied into this next installation. From her presence in One and Only, the bracelet from Go On, her yellow truck being in both Let Me In and Girlfront, and her yet to be uncovered aspects that baffle and intrigue me, she is a force in the lore that I think could unveil some serious revelations at some point in time. The healing aspect of Go On's Christ-like presence is also very astounding. Since she herself had said that the only one who can shine a light in her heart is herself, has she just set out to inspire hope in others? Aside from that, we now know that Goan has gone back to mend a few things. The actions that will ensue after the literal butterfly effect are going to shape the Luniverse in entirely unforeseen ways. Goan of the past could not have known how Hassel's struggles would affect the union of Luna. If one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not on him. It isn't until Goan sees how this will affect the future of Luna and Hassel's entire being that she goes back to renew the light inside Hassel's own heart. For if one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. Goan sees the good of Hassel, and her place in the Luniverse. But within this renewal, how will the rest of the Luniverse alter? Will Hassel accept this new change? Or cut ties with it completely? Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment to add to the conversation. I think so far, this is my favorite teaser installment to date, ever. And that's saying a lot. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is Twinfish, signing off.